First bound, I want to talk to you about your Tupac comparison. Like, we've had game in here. We've had Tiger in here. They say you have a lot of Tupac in you. You <laughs> even um, refer to yourself as, like, the R&B Tupac. Oh, oh I, I mean, they, they kind of do that. I, oh. I'd be like, man, don't do not do that. They, they do don't. you feel, or, like, Tupac's <laughs> the only one who gets you? Um, You know, I just kind of identify with, with, with a young, you know, black male who, mm -hmm. who, you know, deal with trials and tribulations and, you know, can, can express his, his art through his, his poetry. You know, and, and also, you know, through everything, he's, he's, I'm passionate, so I, mm -hmm. I can I can identify with that. Everything I do is passion. I wear my heart on my sleeve. So, you know, whether it be, you know, me going to the store, getting groceries, mm -hmm. right, I get these groceries, or, you know, me painting. Mm -hmm. So it's just I'm passionate about everything I do. So I can identify with how, how Tupac kind of, you know, had that moral in him. Now, when you when you talk about paintings, man, you yeah. for one, I remember one mm -hmm. time, Chris, you came and we had just like a white tablecloth. Yeah. And you just you just start draw, drawing on that. That's what the first time I knew that you were an artist. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I think we sold it in Japan for like ninety thousand dollars. <laughs> <or something. laughs> but that's why we got that right there. You can just draw another one. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Best okay. believe it. And it's symphonic love, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna kick in a proceed. A pro, just a proceed. Yeah. yeah like a you small know, percentage. <laughs> don't break it down. Okay. A proceed of the sales okay. will go to symphonic love. <laughs> you know to help children all around the world. You know what I'm saying? But it's gonna help more so the children in my household. <laughs> You know and what you, I'm saying? You brought up how you deleted your Instagram, but you would post a lot of your art on there. Do you think you'll get it back just for the I mean, art aspect of it? Um, well, right now, the stuff that I'm trying to do is more like, uh, you know, collaboration. So I just painted with a, with a guy named OG Slick from out of here. So he's pretty dope. So a lot of the stuff I want to do is kind of either capture it on camera, like with my personal camera, then put it out as a webisode. Or, so you yep. see the actual process of me doing it. You know, so it's more of like a... Do you get a chance like to paint episode. or do art a lot? Yeah, I do it all the time. I'm at my house, I paint inside my house. Mm. You know, That's I got, got by my pool, I paint everything. His really pants. Yeah, he has paint on his pants. Yeah, all my, his it's pants. Paint. It's like, paint there's paint everywhere. Pants. Man, yeah. can you take those pants off so we can sell them? You want to sell them? <laughs> That's artwork right there. Yeah. Yeah. Good move, baby girl, too. Chris, there was recently a picture of you and J-Lo together in the yeah. studio. Ooh. Now, is that collab for your album or for her album? Well, actually, I'm just writing right now for her album. So, you know, hopefully awesome. I can get her. I got a couple other songs on my album that, you know, would be a great, you know, girl feature, especially mm -hmm. for me and J-Lo. Like, I want to just do a dope dance video with me and her. You know, that I think would that would be, be kind of, you know. Hey, Chris, so you write, produce, Damn. direct. direct. Uh -huh. So you do pretty much everything. I try. So it, it's kind of hard for somebody to come in and bamboozle you because you know how to do your own All situation. Most of the time. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, keep that just like that, yeah. man. Keep that money coming in from oh, this yeah. side, that side, and that side. Gotta, and gotta he's just eat. 23. Yeah. Damn. What do you see at 30, man? At 30, um, hopefully still, you know, being able to do this music and, you know, being taken seriously as, a, as an artist and my right. music can still kind of grow with me. And still be good. And, and, you How know? important <laughs> is that yeah. to you, though, Chris, man, where the certain things that, that, that Chris been through publicly mm -hmm. that had nothing to do with, with the music. Yeah. How important is it for you to have that music outweigh all the other stuff? Well, honestly, it's, it's it's not even the music. It's more so my fans because, you know, I can go in there and sing a million one songs and put them out and be like, okay, cool, I'm, I'm this, I'm that. But if the fans don't receive it or they don't love it, you know, it's not, it's not going to get played. So I think... You know, if it wasn't for my fans, I wouldn't I wouldn't be doing it because it wouldn't be a purpose. Like, actually, I kind of notice how now my music can influence people, change people's lives, or you know, and um, make people positive. So. Hey, Chris, at, at certain times, did you think that it was so dark that you could you couldn't see a certain way out? Like, man, with like, when is this going? ease up or when is this going to get easier i mean you you got to pay for certain things yeah absolutely. you know what i'm saying and i mean in, in in all ways criminally godly whatever it may be yeah but at certain points where you like was it so dark that you just felt like man is there any light i mean i had my points like early on when i was like about 19 i, I was going through a little early stage of depression but from there i just kind of you know what I, I just prayed on it and i just really stayed humble i stayed around all the people that i grew up with you know kind of went back to being Christopher instead of you know, mm -hmm. Chris Brown, and not even nineteen. I'm I'm thinking on just the the Rihanna, the the any the, the yeah. The I'm chairs, saying, you know what I'm saying? saying. I'm saying at that time, like it happened when I was eighteen. Oh. The first stuff, yeah. So nineteen was the was the year that I kind of was like everybody was like, all right, yeah, we ain't playing this music. We don't really like him. It's a no all the time. So you know, for 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 you know, a nineteen year old young man, it's kind of hard not not being able to you know accept people not liking you when you know they loved you for for 
whatever. You know, so it kind of was hard. Even even your friends, some friends not talking to you, some people, mm. some of your friends in the industry talking bad about you. you know? Right. But, you know, I think it's a learning it's a learning step for me. So, and, it, and it's basically, I wouldn't even take it back. Right, Like, right. I wouldn't, I wouldn't t- change it for the world. I wouldn't, I wouldn't. Because you know, what you learned but, from it or. Exactly, because mm-hmm. cause what, what I went through and what I'm going through now in life is just making me a better man. I heard that. We got Chris Brown in the neighborhood, Big Boy's Big Neighborhood. Boy.